Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's talk about the terms opposition and conjunction. Because of the relative orientation of the orbits of the planets Earth and Mars relative to the Sun, and also the eccentricity of those two planet orbits for Mars and Earth, and then the relative orientation of the aphelion between the orbit of Mars and Earth, we have some interesting relationships that are caused by their positions throughout the year. Notice that Earth goes around the Sun once every year. Mars takes almost two Earth years to go around, about 1.82 Earth years. And so there will be at different positions relative to the Sun and one another at different times of the year, and this is constantly changing. But notice that the position of the Earth relative to the Sun being closest, or in this case being farthest away, notice that I tried to draw it in such a way that it became obvious when the Earth was farther and closer, when Mars was farther and closer. So this is the point that's farthest away in Earth's orbit, called aphelion. That point almost coincides when Mars is closest to the Sun. It differs by about 50 degrees, so that's relatively close. It's almost opposite if you want to think about it that way. So there's going to be cases where Earth and Mars will be very close together. At that point, Earth and Mars will only be 0.37 astronomical units away. And just about a year or two ago, we had a situation where Earth and Mars were very, very close, and they will not be that close again for a long time. Then you can see that if Earth is over here and Mars is over here, when Mars is at its furthest distance at aphelion and Earth is near perihelion, the distance between Earth and Mars are 0.67 astronomical units, which is almost twice as far away. Which means, in this case, Mars will look a lot smaller and dimmer than in this case. But when Mars and Earth appear on the same side of the Sun along the same line like this, that's, that's, we say then at that point that Mars is at opposition. It's opposite to the Sun from us, and thus that's why they call it opposition. It's on the opposite side relative to the, to the Sun. But if the Earth is over here and Mars is over here, again on the same line between Earth, Sun, and Mars, but now the Sun is at the other side of the, the Mars on the other side of the Sun, then we say that Mars is at conjunction. So this is Mars at opposition, and this is Mars at conjunction. Of course, that can happen at any point in the or orbit, and that does happen at different points. When it's like this, it can happen at any point in its orbit. Of course, at this point, they're the farthest away at 0.67 astronomical unit. At this point, they're the closest. Then, of course, this doesn't stay that way over time, over the hundreds and thousands of years, as the perihelion and aphelion position changes of each of the orbits, all this will then change. Also, as you could, so not only that, but the eccentricity of the orbit changes. In other words, the elongation of the orbit will change over time. For Mars, the eccentricity changes anywhere from 0 to 0.14. So currently it's at 0 0.093, but it can change and over time it will change. The same for the Earth, the eccentricity will change from 0 to, zero, to 0.06, currently it's at 0 0.017. The greater the eccentricity, the greater the variation in the seasons and the climate. If the eccentricity becomes a lot larger, the climate will become more severe. If the eccentricity is smaller, the climate will become less severe. So you can see that as the eccentricity changes, Earth's climate can go through tremendous changes. And as we have seen in the geological records, Earth has gone through tremendous changes just in the last 400,000 years. And all part of the change in the eccentricity and the situation, the orientation of where the Earth is at in its orbit versus the inclination of the axis, which, by the way, also changes over time. So you can see that there's these interesting relationships. Sometimes Mars looks beautiful and big and red in the sky. It turns out that when we have a situation like this, the diameter of Mars, the diameter, as we see from the Earth, will be equal to 25 arc seconds. So that's the largest Mars will appear in the sky. And of course, at that time, every telescope of the Earth will be pointing at Mars, taking a good look at it. And we have some really good pictures of Mars from the Earth using the Hubble Space Telescope to get us the best view we've ever had from Earth. Matter of fact, I believe some of the pictures in the book right here, 
Now, these particular ones may not have been taken. I, I need to look at some other pictures. So obviously, these are not pictures that were taken from the Earth. There's way too much detail on there. This is a composite of all the pictures that have been taken by satellites that orbit the planet. They put them all together, and they give us that big global view of what the planet looks like. When we take a look at Mars from a distance, it doesn't look nearly this clear. We don't get nearly the kind of resolution from this far away. But of course, when we're closest like this, that's when we use the advantage of taking a look at the planet from far away from the Earth's orbit to see what it looks like as much as we can from a distance. Of course, when we do that when the planet is here, then of course we have a much worse look on the planet, on the surface of the planet, with a lot less detail that's being visible. So, that is what changes as the different positions of Earth versus Mars occurs. And again, this is what we call Mars at opposition, and this is what we call Mars at conjunction. And that is how it is. So the Earth uh, at helium and perihelium is at an angle compared to Mars's? Yes. So first of all, perihelion happens here for the Earth, and perihelion happens there for Mars. So there's a difference of 130 degrees. If you look at the backside, aphelion is here, perihelion is here with a difference of 50 degrees. That's right, so it's almost opposite to one another. <laughs> it gets complicated, and that is just at this moment in time. Oh no, that always changes. Okay. So yeah, that will change, and, and sometimes it'll be exactly lined up, sometimes it'll be at 90 degrees. It, it's continuously changing. Okay. All the things change about the planet or uh, the orbit of a planet. The, the actual tilt changes, the eccentricity changes, the orientation of the orbit changes. You name it, it changes constantly. So, but this is what it looks like today.